Hey everyone, I'm Abigail, this is Megan, and welcome to another Two Kids interview. We are joined by New York Times bestselling author, Liesl Shirtliff. Ms. Shirtliff has written the modified fairy tale stories, Rump, Jack, Red, and Broom, and the wonderful book trilogy, Time Castaways. Thank you for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. You read children's books. How are your books influenced by your own childhood? Well, I think um, my books are influenced by things that happened in my childhood, things that I experienced, as well as the books and art that I consumed as a child, um, particularly fairy tales. I loved fairy tales as a kid, loved fantasy. I, um, my grandmother introduced me to Shelley Duvall's fairy tale theater. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's kind of old, but they're, um, they're kind of live action, um, fairy tales. Like they take all the fairy tales and, and have turned them into short, um, theatrical, um, films. And she also gave me my first copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales. I was constantly in a world of my own, um, always playing pretend, always, you know, wishing that I was a princess in a castle <laughs> um, or that I could like make magic myself. I just loved magic. I loved those things. So it made sense to me when I started writing that I included those things in my writing because they just resonated with me so much as a child. Did you write a lot as a child? Um, I did. I did write quite a bit. I didn't always, um, I didn't always write, want to write um, in school necessarily. I didn't always love writing assignments, but if I had the opportunity to create on my own, um, just for my own pleasure. Yes, I wrote a lot. I wrote in journals. I kept a journal from the time I was eight years old. And that to me was a really safe space where I could share my thoughts and feelings um, and kind of make sense of what was going on in my life without worrying about anyone judging me or being gross. It was just like my own safe thinking space. Um, this is the first book I ever wrote. I wrote it in second grade. It's called Torty's Wish. And it's actually a fairy tale retelling. It's um, or kind of a twisted fairy tale, loosely based on Aladdin, um, but it's a turtle. And he finds a lamp and rubs the lamp just one time because he only has one wish which is to be the fastest turtle in the world. <laughs> so there you go. That's the first book I ever wrote. Um, and I wrote it in second grade. And it's, I think, the last book I ever illustrated. My illustrations have not gotten much better since second grade. <laughs> fairy tales have been a big part of your life. Which is your very favorite fairy tale? And why? Yeah, um, I think that's really hard for me to nail down. And honestly, I think it changes from time to time, depending on my mood and maybe what I'm going through in life. Um, I, I really have always loved The Little Mermaid um, by Hans Christian Andersen, which um, is the ending especially is very different than the Disney film. So if you haven't, if you haven't ever read that, I highly encourage everyone to read that story because I think it's fascinating um, to compare and contrast those two stories, especially the endings, because it really changes the meaning of the story. Um, but I just really love, um, I love mermaids. I've always wanted, I always wished I could find a mermaid or even be a mermaid. That's just kind of a fascinating concept to me. Um, I I also really love Hansel and Gretel. I think aside from the candy house, <laughs> I really like um, that Gretel is the one that saves the day. It's one of the few fairy tales where the girl is the one, the, kind of the hero of the story and saves the day. Um, she's the one that shoves that, the witch in the oven, um, which was like, you know, felt like, 
feminist power move <laughs> in a way, because most of the fairy tales, they're, um, you know, the girls are pretty helpless, like they're asleep waiting to be kissed awake, or they're in a tower waiting to be rescued. What did you think of the new live action Disney Little Mermaid, if you saw it? I have to be honest, I have not seen it yet. I know, shame on me. <laughs> I really, I want to, I'm excited to see it. I've heard really good things. The previews looked really fun, um, but I, I have not watched it. What did you guys think? I really enjoyed it. What did you think? I agree and think parents should take their kids. How do you come up with the ideas for your books? Um, you know, it's kind of, I, it's kind of funny. I feel like ideas are kind of magical. It's hard to really pinpoint where they come from. I, I usually know, um, can pinpoint the moment that I got the idea. So for instance, with Rump, my first book, my first fairy tale and my first book ever that I published, um, I remember I was actually working on another story. Um, I, I, and I don't even remember what the story was. I just remembered there was a point where I was thinking about names and, um, and I was kind of thinking, oh, maybe it would be interesting if the names were somehow magical, like the names were had some kind of power. And I instantly thought of the fairy tale Rumpelstiltskin, which was one of my favorites as a child. It's not super well known today. I feel like a lot of kids these days don't even know that story. But the name in Rumpelstiltskin, his name is very key to that story. Um, and so I thought, ooh, I wouldn't it be interesting to write a, a version of Rumpelstiltskin where it kind of centered around his name and his name was super important. And then I went back to that fairy tale and I realized, um, you know, I, I reread it and kind of looked at it with fresh eyes and realized we don't know anything about Rumpelstiltskin <laughs> by the end of that story, except that he's named Rumpelstiltskin and he wanted her baby for some reason. And who knows? And he can spin straw to gold, but you know, we don't know how he learned to spin straw into gold. We don't know how he learned that the Miller's daughter, you know, was in trouble, why he goes to help her, why he wants her baby. So my ideas, um, are, I think, are kind of a mix of, um, you know, memory and then combining with other, you know, other ideas, you know, like that name idea that I had combined with Rumpelstiltskin and then just asking lots of questions, I think, is where I get you know, the story to kind of reveal itself. It's like, well, who is this guy? You know, who is this guy Rumpelstiltskin? Where did he come from? How does he learn to spin straw into gold? You know, why does he want our baby? And slowly I start to get answers. I might not get the answer right away. Mm -hmm. It might not be the first answer that comes to me. Maybe it's the second, third or fourth answer that comes to me. But um, it's kind of a... a process of of working to get the ideas and also just being patient and waiting for them to reveal themselves on some level what is your process when putting a book together do you decide the end before the battle or do you put it together in order the yeah every book is a little different um i usually start with um a few basic ideas, a few, you know, obviously I'm going to have my main character. They're going to have a problem. I have sort of a vague idea of a beginning, middle and end. I do a little bit of work on the world, you know, maybe the rules of the magic, the world building creatures, you know, what is their society like? And then I just start writing and, um, it's a little scary, but there's so much I don't feel like I can discover until I'm in the moment, until I'm in the writing. And there's so much that reveals itself to me in the moment. And I like that because I, I, it feels like a surprise and it feels really fresh. And I feel like if I'm surprised and delighted, then hopefully my reader will be too. Um, I don't... I, I I usually write in order, but sometimes I will skip around. 
Um, I do a lot of journaling around my book while I'm drafting. So this is, this is my little journal that I have for the book I'm working on right now. And every day, um, either before or after, or sometimes both, I write in this little journal and I just kind of like, it's almost like talking to myself <laughs> where I'm kind of saying, you know, this is what's happening in the story. Here's what I don't know. You know, what about this? I don't know what to do about this. I don't know what's going to happen next. And somehow by voicing those questions, like writing them out, putting them in words, it just gets my brain working a little bit in how to solve those problems. When you decided to become a children's author, did you worry out if you could do it? Yes. I still worry. I still worry if I can do it. I um, I feel like every day is like a crisis, a new crisis of confidence. <laughs> um, writing is kind of scary, and I feel like there's always this this like, um, forgive me for going full fairy tale, but there's like this evil force trying to keep you from writing in a way, trying to keep you from creating something. And um, I mean, it really is just fear of, you know, maybe what if I can't write this story? What if it, what if I run out of ideas? What if it's not good? What if it won't get published? What, you know, so a lot of fear, I think, can go into that. Can you tell us uh, about a time when you were doing something and noticed someone or something and thought, I need to put that in a book? <laughs> Um, yeah, I have, um, I have, where did I put my phone? I have like a whole note in my phone where, you know, writers are listeners. We pay attention to what's going on around us. And so anytime someone says something funny or interesting, I I write it down and I don't know if I'm ever going to use it or not, but maybe sometimes it will, it will spark something. Um, my son, my, well, he's my, my third child. I have four kids and my third child, um, when he was little, I was writing rump and he was just this bow legged little toddler. He was super chubby. He had this cute little raspy little voice and he would just talk nonstop, just go around ch chitter chatter and telling everyone. And so he was actually my inspiration for the gnomes in Rump that go around delivering messages. <laughs> That's my son. What do you hope kids will get out of your books? Mostly I just hope that they'll get enjoyment of reading. Um, that's that's been my my main goal is I just want to write books that kids will enjoy reading that will show them that reading doesn't have to be a chore it doesn't have to be boring it can be so delightful and um, enjoyable and you can even get totally lost in a book and um, so that's mainly what I hope what writer has had the most influence on you Oof. um I feel like there are a lot, but one that I go back to again and again um, is Gail Carson Levine. Um, she wrote Ella Enchanted, which is, I think, the very best Cinderella story that there is out there. So it feels almost a little presumptuous of me to try to attempt a Cinderella story now. I never thought I would because to me, this is like the perfect Cinderella story. I'm taking it in a totally different direction than she did. But um, I, I love her writing style. I feel like she gets a lot of meaning and imagery in, in a short amount of space. Her books aren't super long, but they feel very full. They feel, you know, full of imagery and great characters. Um, and so I'm always reading her writing and and thinking how can I make my writing like this you know um and you know there are lots of other writers who I do the same but definitely Gail Carson Levine is is a big one for me which of your books do you think would make the best movie 
Oh, I think they would all make great movies, honestly. But in term, I do feel that Time Castaways has really amazing cinematic appeal. Like, I feel like there's so much cool stuff you could do with the time travel, the time traveling ship, and, you know, all the places that they travel throughout time, I think would work really well on the silver screen. I think that would be really cool. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> what advice do you have for young people who want to write? I my advice to anyone, you know, young or old, is to read a ton. Read, 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 and read really widely. Read all different kinds of books. Read, you know, in lots of genres: fiction, nonfiction, fantasy, contemporary sci-fi historical all of it um because there is good writing in every genre and the more good writing you read you'll start to pick up on what makes good writing and you'll also develop your own taste which will play into your own writing style so i would say read a lot when you find books that you really love read them over and over again, start to pick out the patterns and um, things that make the book work really well. And then, and then just write, 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 and don't, it's not going, you know, be okay with bad writing. <laughs> like I said, my first drafts are terrible and we can't, you know, we can fix bad writing, but we can't fix no writing. So read a lot and write a lot and then revise. That's my, that's my best writing advice that I have. That's pretty big advice. Do you also have a smaller tip? Something you do when you're writing that maybe a lot of people don't? Um, yeah, let's see. Something that... I do when I'm writing that maybe a lot of people don't. I I have a ritual, but I always do a brief meditation before I start writing, and I feel like it really helps clear my mind um, to, to really focus. And um, this is actually probably something that a lot of writers do, but I also set timers. Um, and I make sure I set a timer and I put you know, my phone on do not disturb. I put a sign on my door, do not disturb. So my family doesn't bug me. Um, I really try hard to eliminate distraction and make sure I'm solely focused on my task, my writing task. Can you tell us a little more about the book you are writing now? Well, um, I can tell you that um, it's, a, it's a retelling of Cinderella and I'm doing it from the fairy godmother's point of view. So I'm getting really into the um, world of fairies, which is something I haven't really explored in my books um, at all to this point. So that, that's been lots of that fun. That sounds very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm really excited. I it's still, like I said, it's still new. It's still fresh. I haven't even showed it to my editor yet. I'm in the beginning stages. So that's really all I can tell you. Cinderella from the fairy godmother's point of view. <laughs> I'd read that. Thank you. Finally, it's time for our Turbo 10. 10 rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. No, let's go. Number one, what is your favorite phrase to use? What's my favorite phrase to use? Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, see, I'm not gonna be rapid about this. My favorite phrase to use. Um, you got this. Number two. What is one subject you'd love to learn more about? Uh physics. Number three, what is your go to snack food? Berries. Mostly blackberries. Number four. What was your favorite book growing up? The Boxcar Children by Gertrude Chandler Warner. Number five, if you could teleport somewhere right now, where would you go? 
if I teleport somewhere right now, uh, Ireland. Number six. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Invisibility. Number seven. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Um, favorite cartoon. Favorite cartoon. Either the Smurfs, the Smurfs, or Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> That's dating me. <laughs> Number eight. What is your favorite rainy day activity? Eating. Number nine. If you could have any three dinner guests, who would they be? Uh, Oscar Wilde. Could they be dead or alive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oscar Wilde. Um. Uh, David Sedaris. <laughs> and uh, Tina Fey. Finally. Number 10. If you get what was the best piece of advice you were ever given? Was I okay? So I remember a writer, Orson Scott Card, he's a very famous sci fi writer, and he said, He said, You have to listen to the advice that people give you, but you need to make sure you make it, you don't let the story get away from you, you make it your own. So we have to, li so we basically was saying, listen, but don't listen. It's kind of a paradox. <laughs> you did great. And thank you for spending this time with us. We can't wait to read your future books. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your questions and, and having me on your show. Thank you.